In the constellation of Canis Minor, located at a distance of approximately 12.4 light years from the Sun, Leuton's star was an unremarkable small red dwarf that had a rather noisy neighbour. The famous F class star of Procyon, around 1.2 light years from Leuton's star, outshined and outsang its tiny companion. That was, though, until March 2017, when two candidate planets were discovered in orbit around the tiny red dwarf, one of which was in its habitable zone. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we're going back to our exoplanet series and to focus on perhaps the best, most closest chance for life outside of our solar system we know about. So let's get to it. From the skies of the Procyon system, which consists of a large F-class star and a small white dwarf, Leuton star is close enough to remain a fairly bright second magnitude star. Interestingly enough, roughly the same brightness as our own sun would be for Procyon. At present though, and in contradiction to Procyon, which is in fact moving towards us, Leuton star is moving slowly away from the solar system. The closest approach occurred about 13,000 years ago, when it came within 11.97 light years. Approximately a quarter of the mass of the sun, Leuton star has just 35% of the sun's radius. In Leuton star skies, the F-class star of Procyon would be an extremely bright star, with a visual magnitude of minus 4.5, it will shine in daylight, much like our own sister planet Venus does from the Earth. The closest encounter between the two star systems of Leuton star and Procyon occurred around 600 years ago, when Leuton star was at a minimal distance of just 1.12 light years from Procyon. Some even believe that there may be a gravitational relationship between the two. So let's take a closer look at the Leuton star system so far as we know it. Leuton star B, also more commonly known as Gliese's 273b, is a confirmed, likely rocky, exoplanet. It orbits within the habitable zone of Leuton's star. With stellar luminosity of just 0.01 solar luminosities, Leuton's star's habitable zone is extremely small. Here we see that an Earth-like planet would have to be between 0.08 and 0.17 astronomical units, and that's just 11.97 million kilometers to 25.4 million kilometers away from the star. We think it's one of the most Earth-like planets ever found though, and is the fifth closest potentially habitable exoplanet known, at a distance of 12.2 light years. Leuton's B is the super-Earth with around 2.89 times the mass of Earth, and receives just 6% more starlight than we do, making it one of the best candidates for habitability. In October 2017 and 2018, the non-profit organisation METI, or Messaging Extraterrestrial Intelligence, sent a message containing dozens of short musical compositions and a scientific tutorial towards the planet in hopes of contacting any potential extraterrestrial civilizations. Leuton's B orbits at a distance of 0.09 astronomical units, putting it on the inner edge of the habitable zone, and it completes one orbital period in 18.6 days. It may be potentially habitable if water and an atmosphere are present. Depending on albedo, its equilibrium temperature could be anywhere between 206 and 293 Kelvin. There is also another inner planet, Leuton C, which is one of the lightest exoplanets ever detected by radial velocities, with a mass of 1.18 Earth masses. Leuton C, however, orbits too close in, has an orbital period of only 4.7 days, and it's likely to be more of a Venus-like world or even a mercurial twin than a super-Earth. Both planets are interestingly alone in near 4-1 resonance, which means for every 4 orbits of C, B makes 1. It is possible that with still further yet undiscovered planets, the entire inner part of this system could be trapped in a single simple mean motion resonance chain, like those on TRAPPIST-1. In channel news, I may have to move to a twice monthly format for the next few weeks, as my day job workload increases. Some ideas for upcoming videos include looking more closely at Cassiopeia, and continuing our solar system and brightest star series. We may also look at some more local exoplanets and assess their astrophysical locations and properties. Let me know in the comments below what you think is best. Also, look out for a Christmas special edition episode regarding a certain special star, and credit to What's Next for giving me the idea. Don't forget to check out his channel also, which becomes highly recommended. I'll link it in the description below. Now, let's continue. And you may ask why are these planets remarkable? This is because Leuton star B has massive advantage that it holds over the likes of Proxima B, or indeed the famous Trappist-1 planets. 
This is because unlike many other potentially habitable exoplanets orbiting red dwarfs, Leuton b has the advantage of orbiting a very, very quiet host. With a long rotational period of 118 days, Leuton's star is not prone to powerful solar flares. We know that strong enough flare events can of course strip the atmospheres of orbiting planets and eliminate realistic chances of habitability. So Leuton's b, not suffering from this fate, is likely to have retained any atmosphere billions of years, potentially enabling the development of life as we know it, even possibly intelligent life. Luton star B could though be tightly locked to its star, and we discussed how this may or may not be a problem in the Proxima B and C video. Don't forget to check that one out if you haven't already, and I'll link it in the card above. In a tidally locked world, temperatures can vary wildly, but it doesn't rule life out, it only makes it life not as we know it. Also, a planet could be in a 3-2 resonance with three rotations for every two orbits, similar to our own planet Mercury, and it could make the temperature ranges very Earth-like indeed. In this depiction of Leuton's star B, we see a red sky with a foreground littered with stalagmite-like stunted growths, perhaps limited by the planet's extra gravity. In such a world, much of the luminosity of this star would come in the infrared. Visible light would perhaps be at a premium in such a world. We don't really know what this world would be like though, but here is another artistic impression which now depicts Leuton's star fading below the horizon. As we look at the night skies, we find Procyon, which is a permanent feature in the skies of Leuton's star, and shines bright enough that even on a dimly lit day it could be seen all day long. Super-Earths of about two Earth masses may well be conductive to life as well. The higher surface gravity leads to a thicker atmosphere, increased surface erosion and a flatter topography. The end result could be an archipelago planet of shallow oceans dotted with island change ideally suited for biodiversity. Here we see alien planet life, resembling in some way the strange islands of Socotra on Earth, struggling to grow against such high gravity, while photosynthesizing leaves stretch far and wide to catch infrared photons. Interestingly, an even more massive planet of over two Earth masses would retain more heat within its interior from its initial formation much longer. This means it could sustain plate tectonics, which is of course vital for regulating the carbon cycle, and hence the climate, for longer. The thicker atmosphere and stronger magnetic field would also shield life on the surface against harmful cosmic rays. When viewed from Leuton's star, the double system of F-class yellow-white subgiant Procyon A and its smaller white dwarf companion Procyon B, just over a light year away, remain too far away to separate the pairing. Why not have a look in tonight's sky if you have the chance? We can find Procyon by finding the Orion constellation, moving eastwards from the top right star Bellatrix through the top left one Betelgeuse. The next bright star you'll see will be Alpha Canis Minoris, or Procyon. It must be added, however, that research suggests that these rocky centres of super-Earths may unfortunately be unlikely to evolve into terrestrial rocky planets like the inner planets of the solar system, precisely because they appear to hold onto their large atmospheres. Actually, it's quite pertinent really, because recently a lot of focus, you may know, has been placed on Hyacian planets. A derivative of the words hydrogen and ocean Hyacian planets are a hypothetical type of planet, described as a hot water covered planet with a hydrogen rich atmosphere that's likely capable of harbouring life. This may well include super Earths like those around Leuton's star, as well as many Neptunes, and as a result they are expected to be numerous in the exoplanet population. The massive advantage of these worlds is that they can lie many, many astronomical units from their host star, or even without one at all because the habitable zone of such planets, given that they have such large atmospheres, may be significantly wider than the terrestrial-like habitable zone that we're used to. Heavy enough to hold on to hydrogen and helium, they provide warmer temperature conditions on their surface, albeit at higher pressures than those we are used to on Earth. These higher seen planets are thought to have radii as large as 2.6 Earth radiuses, and up to in and including masses of 10 Earth masses, which spans the gap between Earth-like planets and rocky worlds, and up to Neptune-like ice giants. So, does this mean that there might be hope yet for life around Procyon, as well as around Leuton's star? Well, yes actually, because higher seen worlds could well be commonplace, and as the habitable zones are huge, it could even mean that a rogue world could be captured by the enormous gravity of a star like Procyon, orbiting at great distances, like months, if not even years, and yet still be perfectly habitable. These Hyacian planets may soon be studied for biosignatures by terrestrial telescopes, as well as the soon-to-be-launched James Webb Space Telescope, scheduled later this year. 
We already know that the third largest star by mass within 20 light years after Sirius and Altair is Procyon, and it has a small white dwarf companion. What we didn't know though, is that there is an even smaller star that may or may not be bound to the system, Leuton's star, and it could one day be our principal target for extrasolar life. A small yet beautifully calm red star, Leuton's star has a planet that may be the closest and most Earth-like in our local neighbourhood. It has a noisy neighbour that shines throughout the day and night in its skies. But one day, the dim infrared light of Leuton's star may just prove its worth and take its place in the most important places in our human future and history. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks to those of you who are regular viewers and subscribers. The channel is hopefully improving with each video. As you know I've had a few audio problems, but I do learn new techniques and slowly upgrade my equipment as time goes by. If you want to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. If you have any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below. It could just be your idea next week that shows up. Well, take good care of yourselves and look after yourselves and your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.